Hello everyone, this is Dr. David, you can call me Margarita. Today is a very important day because I'm gonna be able to talk about the living donor transplant, specifically kidneys. I do have an audience where they're gonna be asking me questions and then in a little bit I'm going to answer them. Currently in the United States, there is a growing list of patients that are in need of an organ transplant and that can vary from liver, kidneys, pancreas, even heart but the biggest list is in the kidneys. In the state of New Jersey and Pennsylvania, the list just keeps growing faster and faster because there's not much supply. There's a lot of demand for kidneys, but there's not a lot of supply. So instead of depending on a waiting list, which is where usually patients would get an organ, which can vary depending on blood type, if your blood type O, if your blood type AB or B or A, a lot of people also depend on people that are going to donate to them. So the living donor process is not difficult, but it's not easy either. So in order to, for us to decrease this list of people waiting for a kidney transplant, one of the things that we encourage patients to do is to talk to their family. It is a very hard conversation to have, but it's an important one because you will wait less for an organ transplant if you are able to find someone that is willing and able to donate to you. Also, when you're receiving an organ with, from someone that is living, the life expectancy of that organ is much higher than receiving one from a cadaver. Okay, which, and, then it's, and when I mention cadaver, I'm not saying someone that is just dead, I'm saying someone that's intubated, that's getting oxygenated, but unfortunately has no brain activity and the family or has been the patient's wishes to donate. A lot of times when you're dealing with cadaver organs, the life expectancy is not as long as a living donor's. You don't know how long that patient was intubated or what other issues they had. As compared to someone that's a living donor that has been evaluated and is in full health. So one of the things that I love to advocate for is being a living donor because myself, I was a living donor and it's gonna be, it actually just passed 10 years. I donated it to a loved one and it literally changed their life. There are a lot of reasons people donate. Some may donate for wrong reasons, some donate for right reasons, but you have to be able to be healthy enough to go through the process. And although the process can be at times lengthy, it is not as hard on you as you may think. For example, the process before actually having the surgical procedure involves getting an evaluation. Usually you would attend the appointment with the recipient and we're gonna, uh, and we're going to focus on kidney transplant because that is what I donated. Um, you would attend the consult, the appointment with the recipient, and the recipient and the donor have two different teams. There is an evaluation team for the donor, and then there's an evaluation team for the recipient. They don't like to mix it because they wanna make sure that you are donating for the right reasons and that you're not being influenced. That's so the living donor is not only evaluated with lab work, but they also get a physical evaluation by one of the transplant surgeons. They are also seen by the transplant nephrologist, which is the kidney doctor for the transplant patients. They're also seen by social work. They're also seen by nutritionists because we wanna make sure that if you are donating this kidney, that you are healthy. A lot of people think that when you are in the process of organ donation, it's only a blood type. It is way more than that. We want to make sure that you are mentally healthy as well. We have had a lot of patients, and I've worked in the transplant field, that will call, I want to be an altruistic donor. What does that mean? That means that they just want to, you know, they feel that they want to donate to someone um, that they don't know and they want to help out because they know that the list is so big. However, a lot of times we have patients that do call that are, want to be altruistic, and although sometimes it is for their good reason, sometimes they might have mental health issues. Maybe they have schizophrenia, they have bipolar, they have depression, and they feel that this is their way of giving to society, or they're just not mentally sound and they say, oh, I just want to donate, but eventually, through the evaluation process, it, they can be uh, determined who's who. 
So why do we see the nutritionist? We wanna make sure that your BMI is within range. We cannot have someone that is obese donate, although sometimes they'll say, depending on how much you have to lose, they say, okay, you can be a donor as long as you lose this amount of weight within a certain amount of time. So that doesn't disqualify you, but remember, obesity is associated with other factors. You can have high blood pressure, you can get diabetes, so you can have things that might put you at risk in the future where you would need your kidneys yourself, so you are unable to give it to someone at the moment. You also see the social worker. Those are the ones that are gonna ask you those mental health questions. They wanna make sure that you're giving this kidney for the right reasons, not because someone is paying you or because you feel obligated or you're being forced. They wanna make sure that you're doing it because you really do wanna help this patient, whoever that patient is. Now, lab work. Number one, they wanna make sure, are you blood type compatible? I get this question all the time. Is it only the blood type that has to be compatible for me to donate? And no, that is the first step. However, if you are not compatible via blood type, there is this paired exchange program. What does that mean? Well, if I'm not compatible with, let's say, my cousin or my friend, whoever I wanna donate to, I might be compatible with someone that lives in California or someone that lives in New York and there might be someone else compatible with the person I want to donate to, so we do a paired exchange. That has worked wonderfully and it has decreased the amount of individuals that are waiting on the kidney transplant list because you're able to do connections as opposed to just depending on that living donor that unfortunately, although they had great intentions, are not compatible with you. Now, let's say that you are compatible with the recipient. At this point, they're gonna do a second test. They're gonna do a flow test. So here is where they're going to determine, do these two parties have any antibodies that can cause a problem if we were to transplant the living donor kidney to the recipient? This is where they determine how compatible you are. The only individuals that are 100% compatible are identical twins, not fraternal, identical. We wanna make sure that we get the perfect candidate for donation because after the process is over where the recipient receives this organ, they're going to have to take immunosuppressive medication for the rest of their life. So we cannot have a patient receive an organ from someone that they might not be compatible as well as somebody else. Age is a factor for donation as well. If you have someone that's in their 20s and um, a living donor is 67 or 65, that might not be the best organ for this uh, patient. However, you have to let the medical professionals, the transplant nephrologists, the surgeons determine that. And how they determine who is a viable organ donor is through these weekly meetings that they have in order for them to discuss the cases and see okay, we have five donors for this patient, who is the best one out of the five that can donate to this person that won't put the donor at risk for other things? Once that is determined, then the process moves a little faster. Uh, one of the things that I must tell you is that for you to be an organ donor, you cannot have diabetes, you cannot have any type of liver issues or kidney issues, you cannot have cancer. You cannot have um, things that are gonna put you at risk for developing kidney disease yourself. So you have to be very healthy, and you wanna be healthy because you're going to donate an organ to save someone else's life, so you don't wanna donate something that you're gonna need yourself, okay? Uh, after uh, I donated a kidney, I was able to have children. I had two previously. I donated the kidney back in 2009 and 2012. I had a baby girl. So donating a kidney does not affect in the future when I, I meet someone and I get married and I'm gonna, I wanna have children. It has no effect on that. Now I'm going to open the forum for some questions that my audience have. And I would just ask if you could speak a little louder so that they could hear you out here in the YouTube land. Who wants to go first? I'll go first. Um, one of my questions is, what are the requirements that are needed to be a living donor? One is age. They will look at your age. They will look at the obesity level, how fit you are, how healthy you are. They will look at your medical history. So you ha have you had ever um, a 
kidney kidney stones are you propensed to getting multiple kidney stones because if you're getting a lot of kidney stones that is in your kidneys so this can put you at risk in the future of having kidney issues um, do you are you mentally sound are you doing this for the right reasons and um, the lab work so you have to make sure that you are compatible so on that day that you go for the evaluation when the recipient is being evaluated by their own team because remember they have a living donor team and they have a uh, recipient team they're going to check are you blood type compatible so a lot of times within I say 24 to 48 hours they're able to know are you blood type compatible and if you're not that's where it ends unless the person wants to be part of the paired exchange program if you are compatible blood type that's where they're going to move on and do the following tests what other questions do you have what made you decide to be a living donor a lot of factors play into uh, making that decision who are you donating to how is it going to change their life um, how is it going to change my life what effect is that decision going to have for my future for uh, my family so there's a lot of things that happen but it's it's it just depends on emotions I think with me when I made that decision I want to make sure that this person um, lived a full life uh, was able to be there for their family um, was able to feel better because they felt so bad for so long um, and you know do you want to help someone else you know sometimes um, I got questions like how about if you were to need your kidney in the future? How about if maybe one of your children needs a kidney in the future and if you donate it now, you won't be able to do it for them. But then I put back the question, how about if I don't, right? How about if I don't donate it and then this person is gone forever, the, the family of this person is not gonna have this individual. Um, how about if they had children, are their children gonna have a, a person in, in, in their life that's gonna guide them? And then maybe I also, I, I also thought, let me think about the future. How about if I'm older and I don't have any problems and I could have saved someone's life? So a lot of things happen when you're making that decision but it always has to be the right decision. Um, it has to work for you, it has to work for the recipient, but I think that it's more of a personal choice. And although you're gonna get a lot of people that are gonna say, oh, you need to, you know, you shouldn't do that because if somebody that you, you um, love needs it, you can't. But then again, how about if they, you know, if I don't have any problems and they could have used the kidney sooner? That's a good question. Another question? My question is kind of specific. I was wondering how long it took you to go through the whole evaluation and testing process to see if you were compatible. That's a good question. So when I decided that I wanted to be this person's donor, the process was pretty simple. I went to the evaluation date the recipient went to. I was evaluated. That was a whole day evaluation. That day can run between four to six hours, so it's always good to have a good breakfast, and you do get breaks. Um, so if I were to say that the process went super smooth, it would take about three months, if that. It could be even sooner. So you see how it is beneficial to find a living donor as opposed to waiting a year, two years, three years. The list for the O blood type is five or more years, so, it is so much better when you're able to find someone that can help you now because you might avoid dialysis altogether, which is what you would be getting if you have kidney failure because you need your kidneys to filter your blood. And unfortunately, because of your kidney failure, you aren't able to do so. So they start dialysis either through a peritoneal way or through a AV shunt or a fistula. So the quality of life of that person has much improved, so you can get transplanted pretty quickly. If you're part of the period exchange program, it might be a little longer because it takes a lot of arranging, especially when you're talking about multi-state processes, but it's pretty quick. Okay, I have a question. Um, has being a donor changed your life in any way? I would say that it has, because it really is fulfilling to be able to save someone's life to be able to change their life, to change their future path. Um, if this wouldn't have happened, this person would have probably passed away a long time ago. I'm getting emotional. 
Um, so it, it's very fulfilling to be able to help that person and know that they're here, not because of you, but because you have that intuition, I need to save this person's life. Um, and they were able to do so much and thankfully they're still here today with no issues. It's 10 years going on 11 and it, it, it really is just to the better. Now, do I have to take better care of myself? Yes, right? I only have one kidney. Although the kidney kind of compensates for the other one that's missing. I, let's say it was today that I donated the kidney. Um, the site, it wasn't painful. It was done laparoscopically. I only have two little dots in the lower part of my abdomen. Um, the only thing that was painful was because when you have anesthesia, you get constipated. So you get gassy, you can't go to the bathroom because everything's slowed down. So the need to, you know, go to the bathroom was there and I couldn't because of the anesthesia. So that made me a little bloated, so that stretched out the incision site a little bit, but it was not painful. Now I'm not saying that if you were to donate, it's not going to be painful to you, but in my experience as a living donor, it was not painful. Um, I was out for about two weeks from work. Um, this is something that is covered by the recipient's insurance. So it's not cost costly for you, besides the fact that you have to be off of work for about two weeks. Some, some people that I've known may be taken a little longer because they're able to, they get medical leave, but you don't have to. Um, I do take care of myself in terms of what I eat, what I drink. For example, one of the things that can cause kidney failure is excessive sodium use. So if you're eating too much salty foods, that can lead to high blood pressure, which can lead to kidney failure. If I eat too much sweets, that can lead to diabetes, which can lead to kidney failure. If I drink too much alcohol, not only will I have a liver problem normally, but that can lead to kidney failure as well. Um, so things that can have an effect are things that I can kind of do for myself to be healthy, not necessarily because I donated a kidney. Those are behaviors that you should be doing anyway, but I have to be careful because I only have one. So I have to make sure that I'm doing those behaviors, especially with certain medications that I take. For example, there are some medications like NSAIDs, non-steroidal anti-inflammatory drugs, for example, Motrin, ibuprofen, Aleve, Midol, aspirin, that I avoid taking because those are metabolized in your kidneys. So if I were to have a headache, I would probably take the acetaminophen or Tylenol that's metabolized in my liver, then taking a Motrin that can go through my kidneys. Not that you can't, but I prefer not to do it. Thank you for the question. Um, how has the health been for both the recipient and the donor since the transplant? So how has the health been for the recipient and donor was your question. For myself, I haven't had any issues. Um, I said the transplant happened in, in 2009, October of 2009, and in April of 2012, I had a baby girl, so I had no issues. Now, was I monitored a little closely just because of my donation? Yes, but it doesn't mean that because I donated, I was considered a high-risk pregnancy or I had to be in bed rest or, oh my gosh, something was gonna happen to the baby, no. It was just that they take more precaution. Um, for the recipient, uh, they take very good care of their health. They take very good care of what they eat. No sodium. Only when, let's say, if they were to buy something outside in a restaurant, they can eat a little bit. They, they can have sodium. It's just everything is in moderation. But because um, they try to avoid having any complications, they choose to not to um, eat too much of it. Uh, alcohol. The person is not a drinker. I'm not a drinker. Not that you can't drink. Like when, you know, if I go on vacation, I might have a fruity drink here and there, but I'm not going to be, you know, drinking constantly because it's not that I only have one kidney, but, you know, I also have a liver to take care of. And that has nothing to do with the fact that I donated. So you just have to do healthy behaviors so that you can live a healthy life. Any other questions? Um, my question is, how would you suggest starting a conversation for someone in need of a transplant? That is an excellent question. So she asked, how would you suggest someone that's interested in asking a person, it could be a loved one, like a brother, sister, a parent, a friend, 
listen, I am in kidney failure, I am in dialysis, or I'm gonna be starting dialysis, and I really wanna get evaluated for a kidney transplant because the list is so long for me to wait for a cadaver kidney, especially if my blood type is O. Um, and I really wanna be able to ask you. I get that question a lot. How do you start that conversation? Simple, asking. You say just like that. I, you know, I am very sick. I am in dialysis, I'm in kidney failure. Are you able to get evaluated to donate a kidney to me? That seems to be an easy thing to ask until you are in the person's position. You are not bothering the other person. If you are a recipient and you need it, an organ transplant, you need to think about what, what quality of life is out there that you can have as opposed to sitting in a dialysis chair for four to five hours, three times a week. Um, not being able to think straight because of the toxins that build up, being on a fluid restriction because your kidneys cannot take excrete the extra volume of uh, circulating volume of fluid, so you have to wait for your dialysis day. So when that person is thinking about all those things, it makes it a little easier to ask. But the only thing you have to do is ask. I encourage being an advocate for yourselves as a uh, needing an organ transplant. If you go to church, ask in your church. As long as the person does not have health issues like diabetes, cancer, high blood pressure, all those things that they are gonna need their kidney, ask. It doesn't hurt to ask. The worst thing that can happen is that they can say no. But you will be surprised how many people will say, I did not know you were going through that let me think about it or you have other people say you know what i've been waiting all my life to find someone that i can do that for and help them live a better life i will do this for you tell me where i have to go and i will get evaluated but you will never know that until you ask the question any other questions well i hope that this video was of great use to you if you have any questions make sure you put them down in the comment box like this video, subscribe and share with all your friends. And again, I am a living kidney donor and I'm proud of it and I strongly advocate for, for donation. I, I cannot tell you how much this process that I went through helped the other person that received my left kidney. So I hope that you, are, you all out there looking at me in YouTube land, really consider the process of organ donation because that is what's gonna help bring down that list from so many thousands and thousands of people waiting for to live a better life. And one help that you do is, is one less person on that list. So I appreciate all your help. Research the topic. If you have any questions regarding it, just let me know, put it down in the comment box. Thank you and have a great rest of your week. Bye.